Clark County is a statutory or code county. Um, it's uh, been in effect since uh, the Constitution was put into effect in 1889. And that provides for a, uh, one specific type of, of county government structure uh, with three elected county commissioners and then a uh, number of ministerial elect, uh, elected offices as well. Assessor, auditor, treasurer, clerk, um, sheriff, uh, prosecuting attorney. We have about 40 some different governments in Clark County, but at the county government level we have three commissioner districts and then each of those commissioner districts we have one county commissioner who represents the, the people in that district. In 1890 Clark County had a population of around 11,000 people and then uh, again we had uh, the, the, the statutory former government with three county commissioners and then today we have a population of approximately 438,000 people again uh, continuing with three county commissioners. So the county commissioners have both uh, legislative or policy making responsibility as well as the executive administrative responsibilities. So they set policy for county government, uh, they pass ordinances, they do all the land use planning issues as well as being responsible for the um, uh, administrative tasks of the county. So when it comes to building a bridge or paving a road or issuing a dog permit, uh, uh, animal license permit. There are two types, two forms of county government in our state. One is the statutory or code county that we discussed earlier. And the second is the charter county or, or home rule county. And home rule county and charter county are two terms that are, terms that are used um, synonymously. They're, they mean pretty much the same thing. And we currently have six charter counties in this state. And so charter counties give the, the citizens of those counties some options, some flexibility as to how they can design their county government. Well, in my opinion, uh, what started this home rule process here in Clark County is that Commissioner Milkey has been a longtime advocate of the home rule process, of electing 15 people to sit around and think about the former government and are there opportunities to improve our former government to better serve the long term interests of our community. Uh, we then saw that he was able to persuade his fellow two commissioners to vote in favor of that. And so we had a unanimous vote by all three commissioners to elect 15 freeholders. We had 123 people file for those positions, uh, a few people withdrew, so we now have 109 candidates. And then this November, on every voter's ballot, they're going to see five positions. So if you live in Commissioner District 1, 2, or 3, and everyone lives in one of those Commissioner Districts, on your ballot, you're going to see five positions, five different races, with the number of candidates for each of those races. And you as a voter will have the opportunity to cast your ballot for one person in each of those five different races. And after the freeholders are elected, they will meet. Um, they will meet in public meetings. Uh, those meetings will be, um, uh, because they're public meetings, they are elected officials just like a commissioner is, just like a state legislator is, and they're subject to the open public meeting laws, just like every other elected official. So they will decide where they're going to meet, they're going to decide when they're going to meet, and they're they will decide what the agenda of each of those meetings are. And they will discuss the various options, the various features that they can include in a draft charter. And the freeholders will be trying to think about what is in the best long-term interests of our county in terms of the structure of their county government. And then after, if they do agree on that draft charter, it will be presented to voters uh, for voters' consideration. And if voters, a majority of voters approve that, then that charter will be enacted. Well, if we look at these other counties that have, have changed from statutory or code counties to charter counties, I think what you've seen is that the, the freeholders and the citizens there have been in, interested in creating a form of structure that created more transparency, uh, more accountability, uh, created more checks and balances in their county government. They have typically increased the number of commissioners uh, or council members. Um, they have a, they've changed the electing them from the district as opposed to electing them countywide. They've, um, in those four counties, uh, they've modeled their county government uh, after the state model as well as a federal model with a separate branch of government creating a check and balances, shared power between the legislative branch and the executive branch. So some counties don't have an elected county auditor. Uh, some counties have combined the treasurer and the assessor. And then also whether or not those offices are partisan or nonpartisan. 
It's another common element among these counties is the, are the powers of initiative and referendum at the local level. And there's some, some details about how those initiative and referendum actually work, but uh, they all have initiative and referendum powers at the county level. So the initiative uh, gives citizens the opportunity, uh, direct lawmaking authority. They can, um, uh, if a number of citizens sign a petition, the question will be placed on the ballot, and then voters can say yay or nay to that question. The referendum allows uh, voters the ability to um, pass judgment on either on a law that the legislature has passed or the legislative body itself can refer questions out to the voters for their consideration. The, the question is whether or not the freeholders could, could create a separate branch of government. And they certainly could. In fact, the uh, four charter counties that I, I referenced, Pierce, King, Snohomish, and Whatcom, all do have a separate branch of government where the um, executive administrator powers reside, and then the county council is responsible solely for legislative and policy making authority. And in that separate branch of government where the administrative executive powers reside, that is headed up by an elected county executive. The plus is transparency and more open decision making, more accountability. Uh, maybe the con is that it can take longer to make decisions. Um, and then of course it depends on how you structure it and how, you, how people are paid. But it, you, know, you could decide to pay everybody a whole lot of money and you could increase the expenses, the overall cost of this. But you could also structure it in a way that the overall cost was no more than our current structure. And in the, uh, uh, again, in the, uh, each of these four counties that have that uh, branch, that form of government in our state government, there are checks and balances between those, two, those branches of government. So uh, the first one starts with the most powerful one, which is setting the budget. And in government, budget is everything. Typically, the county executive proposes the budget, but the county council approves the budget. Uh, the, uh, another check and balance in the system is that the county council passes ordinances. The county executive can either accept those ordinances or can veto the ordinances. And then if it's vetoed, it's subject to a supermajority uh, override of that veto. If the, when the county executive goes to hire a department head, that hiring has to, is subject to the approval or the rejection by the county council. And then finally, the county council has subpoena powers. They can require, they can force any county employee to come before them and provide evidence and testimony. So those checks and balances are options that the freeholders can consider to include in the charter for Clark County. There were previous attempts in Clark County regarding uh, freeholders in the charter county. In 1982 and 1987 there was a question on the ballot as to whether or not we should elect freeholders. Not, not the positions themselves but simply the question of whether or not we should elect freeholders. And those questions failed and freeholders were not elected and so the whole effort just, just died right there. In 2000, by the commissioner's direct um, resolution, we, on the ballot, there were the, was the opportunity to elect 21 people as freeholders. Why wasn't the charter approved in, uh, in 2002? Many people, myself included, think that putting four questions in front of the voters was, uh, was confusing. And with only 187 votes being the difference between passing and failing that charter, um, will be interesting to see if the freeholders are able to agree on a former government for Clark County and it will be interesting to see what uh, voters in 2014 or 15 think. In 2013, with 123 people filing and then 109 people on the ballot, uh, there is a lot of interest in making a change. What citizens expect from their government is transparency and accountability. And the way you get transparency and accountability in government is through structure. Um, greater structure greater uh, separation of powers, shared powers between different branches of the government as we see in our state level or our federal level, again those four charter counties, um, does result in more process. And more process can result in it taking longer to um, take action. And that's really the trade-off you make for greater transparency and greater accountability. So Clark County voters have an amazing opportunity. It's uh, maybe not once in a lifetime, but pretty darn close. We get the opportunity to help define what our county government could look like for the next 50 or 100 years. We get the opportunity to think about what we believe will be in our best interest for the next 50, 100, 200 years. And the people who get elected freeholders are going to have a big say in that. Ultimately it comes back to the voters, but right now we have an opportunity to elect people who we think will work for the best long-term interests of our county. And so I hope that everyone out there will do a little work, do a lot of work, do some research, ask some people, and find out what the views are of these freeholders, 
uh, you know, what is a charter county? What are the options for free elders? So this is a fabulous program that you're putting on here tonight, and I hope that people will um, not only watch this and think about it, but look elsewhere for information. Again, the clarkvotes.org, we have some good information there, and I'd be happy to provide any, try to find any more information that anybody wants. Just give me a call or shoot me an email.